Hey everybody, just a quick tutorial here to, to discuss procedures and functions. So a procedure or function allows us to perform a task or set of tasks uh, using a named uh, set of statements. And this way we can modularize our programs into manageable blocks of code. So there are two ways to do it, subprocedure or function. The difference is that a subprocedure is going to execute some code but does not return a value. A function on the other hand executes some code and returns a value to, to the calling code. Um, we can pass arguments procedures, uh, we can create static variables, otherwise variables inside of our sub procedures and functions are local uh, to that sub or function. We can pass multiple arguments using uh, comm comma separated lists. Um, so we can also pass uh, arguments either by value or by reference. Let's, let's take a look. I've got a, a quick uh, program, just creates uh, it just asks for costs and a tip percentage and it calculates the tip amount and the total amount uh, when we click this calculate button. It already does it. Um, here you can see it sets a uh, double amount uh, called double tip equal to the value that was input divided by 100. So if the user enters 20, it's going to set this double value to 0.2. Uh, also capture a cost, which is just the, the value of the text input. <coughs> Then we set this uh, label tip uh, to the, the amount of the tip and the total equal to the amount of the tip plus the total cost. Uh, so you see just a very simple tip calculator. So if we enter 40 and 20% since we're so generous, we've got a tip amount of eight and a total amount of uh, $48. So let's modularize this a little bit. First, let's add a subprocedure, uh, and we can discuss the uh, sorry. We can discuss the uh, different uh, keywords that are used to create a subprocedure, and take a look at how it's called. So first, let's let's just create a subprocedure called output tip amount. Um, and what we have here is we have first uh, scope keyword, so private indicates that we can only call this from within form one. Public would mean that we can call it uh, outside of the outside of the class. Sub indicates that it is a sub procedure. Uh, function would indicate that it's a function. Then we have uh, uh, arbitrary name that we give it. Uh, make sure it makes sense, obviously, so that we're calling it. It makes sense. And then, and then we have a uh, in parentheses a list of arguments. There are two types that I'll, I'll discuss: by ref and by val. Uh, by reference passes the uh, variable or the value uh, by reference, so that you can actually modify the original variable inside of the sub the sub procedure or function. Next is by val, and by val uh, actually creates a copy of the variable or the value that's passed in. So that it's local to the subprocedure function only. You cannot modify the original variable. In this case, uh, we'll use a, a by val and we'll say tip, we'll say, we'll say cost, amount, and we indicate the type. Uh, so we have a by val indicating it's passed by value or it's a copy. We have the name that's going to be available only inside of. Uh, the execution of the subprocedure function, and then as and the type of uh, the type of variable that we're we're using. So another by valve for the tip amount, and we end our subprocedure function with an end sub or an end function statement. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this. Uh, logic here into our sub procedure and um, then up here in our code what we'll do is we'll just call the procedure that we've created and again we have a common separate list of values that we're passing to our sub procedure and now we're going to say cost amount times tip amount and instead of just setting it to the text, I'm going to create a, a variable called tip amount as double, and we'll assign these uh, oops. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, tip amounts already used. So let's say uh, actually let's change this to tip percentage. Okay, so what we're doing is we're we're creating a sub procedure here called output tip amount with two arguments cost amount and tip percentage and we're passing those in you see double cost is a value that's available to us here double tip is a value that is available to us as well um, and then we're going to create a local variable inside of output tip amount called tip amount and we'll set that equal to cost amount times tip percentage which are our arguments and then we'll set our label equal to the amount. Notice we're not returning anything. We're just calling the sub procedure. It's doing everything it needs to, uh, and then returning to calling code. Okay, let's um, go ahead and take a look at what happens here. So I'm going to execute this. <coughs> We'll enter values here. So cost amount $20, we're going to pay 20% tip. And you can see once it encounters that output tip amount, it's going to tr con transfer control of execution from this calling code uh, down to output tip amount. And notice what's what's local right now. What, notice what's in scope. We've got double cost, double tip. These are variables that were declared in button one click. Also, uh, uh, Sender and E, you know, things that are uh, were passed into button one dot click are available. Watch what happens when we transfer control to output tip amount. Those have all gone away. Now what we have in scope is cost amount, which is an argument that we've passed in, tip amount, which is a variable that we've declared inside of the sub procedure, and tip percentage, another argument that we've passed in. So as we execute this code, those stay in scope. Once we leave the code, once it once it encounters this end sub, it's going to transfer control back to the calling code, and everything that we had declared inside of output tip amount goes out of scope. Notice that we don't have cost amount available, we don't have tip percentage. Those have all gone to garbage collection. So we have an instance of output tip amount loaded onto the program stack those arguments and local variables are created. Once it leaves the sub procedure, uh, we've, we've gone out of scope, those have gone out of scope and they're gonna be handled by garbage collection at some point. So we'll wrap up execution now and you can see that it's calculated our tip and our total amount. This tip value was set with this label, label tip.text call. Okay, let's do one other thing. So that's a sub procedure. Uh, we've, we've looked at the sub procedure header. Uh, we've executed some statements inside of it. We've seen how to call it using the name that we've given it, a comma separated list of arguments, which we've indicated in our sub procedure header. Uh, ends, we know that end sub ends the sub procedure and returns us back to calling code and that we're not returning any values. Okay, a couple things that we want to do now. First is, we've, we've created a variable called tip amount inside of our sub procedure, which is local, and that is going to be recreated every time we call output tip amount. Now let's create a variable that the program remembers each time that we call output tip amount. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm just going to, going to assign this value right to our text label. And now let's let's create a variable, an integer value, uh, just a count, and we'll just count how many times we've called this output tip amount sub procedure. So we'll say count plus or equal to one, and then we've got a label, label five dot text, and we'll set it equal to this count. I'm going to take off this. Uh, no, no, I guess I'll leave it on there. And, and notice on this, uh, on the on the form, we have this count label. We'll set it equal to the to the new value each time we call this uh, sub procedure. So let's go ahead and execute it. 
and we'll jump through a little faster this time. So 20 and 20, we'll click calculate, and let's jump into our output tip amount. Notice that we've got this count, it's equal to zero, it's the first time we've gone through. Again, we're gonna jump out of output tip amount, and now all of our output tip amount locals are gone. Cost amount's gone, tip percentage count is gone. See, see it's not, not available there in the, the uh, program stack or the locals window. Now let's jump into output tip again. So we'll call this again. And notice right when we jump into output tip amount, uh, we have count available. Oh, oh, it's still equal to zero. I did something wrong here. Uh, let's terminate this. I declared it as a, a standard variable. So what we need to do to create a static variable is to use the static keyword. Let's try it again. So instead of dim count, uh, create it with the keyword static count, and let's try it one more time. So we're going to jump back into execution, uh, 1 through 20 and 20, and calculate. And so we've got count again is equal to 0 the first time through. Let's do it again. So we're going to click calculate to execute it again. And now notice when we jump into output tip amount, it actually works this time, we have an initial value of one. So what, what's happened is we're recreating this variable. We've got uh, a new variable um, inside of a, a locally inside of our, our output tip amount sub procedure. It's not available anywhere else in execution except when we're in this sub, sub procedure. Except now our program has a memory of what the value was. So uh, this is a way to to keep track of a variable value across sub-procedure calls. Now in Windows Forms applications, uh, Visual Basic Windows Forms applications, it's not possible to create a static variable at the class level. So it's important to know how to use these. You can use a static uh, a variable inside of your sub-procedure function and your program will retain a memory of what the value was. Now we only want to use this when we need to pass it uh, between between uh, multiple calls to a sub procedure function. You don't want to just use a static variable to use one. Make sure that you really need to, to use it uh, you know, between multiple sub procedure calls because it does create a little bit of overhead. Uh, and be careful with your logic. Sometimes the logic on these uh, is a little more complex than, than at, at, for, at a first glance. Okay, so now, now we've looked at sub procedures and we've looked at creating a static variable. Uh, we know the difference between a lo just a plain old local variable inside of our sub-procedure versus a static variable. Now let's transition from a sub-procedure into a function and note the similarities and the, and the main, main difference between a sub-procedure and a function. So, okay, so we're gonna take this output tip amount uh, just for to save some room on the screen, I'm gonna get rid of this static. Um, And now we're going to say calc tip amount. And instead of actually um, setting the, the, the text equal to the, to the amount, we're going to, we're going to return the value of the tip amount. So now we're going, to have a, uh, we're going to declare it as a function. Something a function needs is a return type. So the way we indicate return type is at the end of the function header. You might be familiar with other languages where you declare the return type here. In, in this case, we're going to say private function, the name of our function, our arguments list. And then at the end of the function header, we'll say as, and then the return type. And you'll notice right away it's going to say, hey, you need to actually have a return. Um, so what we'll do is we'll return this value. And so now what's happening is instead of uh, you know doing something in our sub procedure, we're doing something and we're returning a value. So let's get rid of this and put back the original logic, which said set our, our label tip text equal to, and we had double cost times double double cost times double tip, basically this. But instead of just multiplying, let's say calc tip amount. Oh, X 
or parentheses there. And we'll send in our cost and our tip as arguments to our function. So let's take a look at what happens here. So if we want to run this, and we say 20 and 20. So what's going to happen is we're going to, it's going to uh, come across this calc tip amount. It knows that that's our function. It's going to call up our function again, just like our sub procedure. You have local variables, the arguments, anything that you created inside of this function. And it's going to calculate this amount. Now here's the difference. When we, when we end the function, when we return, now we've returned a value in place of this function call. So we're setting, it, setting this uh, value based on a value that we've returned to our returning call. And we're setting it equal to the text label. So sub procedures and functions make it easy to modularize our code. Uh, I encourage you to, to try out some sub procedures and functions. Um, you know, use arguments. You can use multiple arguments with a comma separated list. Uh, try returning different uh, types. Uh, and see just how easy it is to modularize our code in Visual Basic. Thanks.